Welcome into the original Gangsters podcast. I am your host, Scott Bernstein, along with my co-conspirator, partner in crime, the Dr. Jimmy Bucciolato. Hi, everyone. Hey, now. Uh, we're going to do a quick hitter episode right now uh, and discuss some things that are happening over in the motherland. <laughs> back, <laughs> the other back side. In, <laughs> the other side. Uh, in um, in Sicily, the the death of Jimmy. T- Jimmy pushes back on the, the notion that he was the boss of bosses. Um, but uh, Matteo, uh, Matteo De Naro, uh passed away in the last uh, week, and uh, he had been on the run until this past January when he was finally taken in to custody. One of the most treacherous and infamous Sicilian mafiosi in history, and Jimmy. There's no better expert when it comes to this stuff. Than the doctor to give us his analysis. Um, we we did a I think we did a little bit of content with John Panisi back in January when he was captured, um, and now this is kind of the addendum to that. He didn't last that long in custody, less than a year, uh, and passed away on September twenty fifth. Yeah. Um, so since we've already discussed it a little bit in that other episode, and it, we're obviously not breaking any news at this point about it, I figured we would just just give a little bit of analysis and maybe some some tidbits that people weren't uh, aware of. But yeah, just in terms of some analysis, I, I I don't I don't agree with the sort of mainstream media's argument that he was the capo di tutti capi. Um, I I just don't think someone from outside of Palermo would 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 have that that much power uh on on the island um especially in the post totorina uh world but he was certainly very powerful very influential in palermo and um he was uh you might you might say he was the boss of bosses within his province which is which is the province of tropani and he's from uh castel vetrano and um uh he comes from a long line uh, mafia family and this is something i made in the episode we did with john um that i think he was hiding in plain sight I, I find it difficult to believe that at least somebody in the italian government didn't know where he was i mean you know john i think pushed back a little bit and said it, it could have been they just they stumbled upon it i find that difficult to believe um i mean there were rumors all those years the decades he was a fugitive that he was in a, any number of places in, in other uh, in Europe in south america um but it turned out the run really, for, yeah go ahead he was on the run for 30 years yeah right yeah yeah and so there is evidence that he did he actually did travel outside of sicily but um people was like there's no way he could be hiding right basically near his hometown and and that's where he that's where he was um uh hiding out so i mean one thing i another thing i would would just add and maybe our audience will find this interesting is I have a specific research interest in Castellamare del Golfo, which is also in Tropani, and my family is from there. If people have read my book or know about the Bonanno history, may be familiar with my family. We just recorded an episode with, with Frank Fiordolino. That's where he's from, too. You know, that should be up soon. People can find out more about Castellamare and the Bonanos. But there is some overlap between Denaro because it was that part of the island and, and the mafia with what was going on in Castellamare and, and Tropani. So just some, some murders that I think um, I'd like to talk about for a minute that Denaro was linked to that relate to the mafia in Castellamare. Um, in uh, March 27th, 1990, the Avola brothers were murdered and Denaro was, was linked to that conspiracy at the time. Um, the Avila brothers were running the mafia in Castellamare and uh, they were on the outs with Totorina at that time and they were twin brothers and they were killed. So then on October 3rd, 1992, Feligi Bucciolato was murdered, another prominent member of the Borgata in Castellamare and he was viewed as a rival to the pro Corleonese side of that world. And another interesting connection there is Feligi Bucciolato's father, Don Cola, Zucola Bucciolato, was the uh, 
provincial representante of Cosa Nostra for around 40 years. And when he died, Francesco Messina Denaro became the provincial representative. And that was that was Matteo Messina Denaro's father, Francesco Don Cic. So some other uh, things to point out. This one's pretty brutal. Uh, this has been reported. You know, a lot of people mention this when they talk about Denaro. The July 1992, the murder of Vincenzo Milazzo and Antonella Bonomo. And one of the reasons why this really caught people's attention is that the Vincenzo Milazzo was the boss of Elcamo at the time. And they killed him, and then they, they killed his fiance. And according to the people that were there that became informants, they said she was pleading for her life because she was pregnant. Now, I've heard different things, and that's commonly reported. I remember reading somewhere that, according to the autopsy, she wasn't pregnant, that, that maybe she thought she was pregnant, but I don't know. Either way, it's pretty gruesome. She was a civilian, and uh, Denaro was one of the conspirators it, in was, that was he murder. A- also involved in the murder of the uh, you know, the judge and the prosecutor. Yeah, yeah, that well, that's the big one. Yeah, that which is uh, uh, Falcone, and, Falcone his wife. and yeah, yeah, they were they were killed. Um, they were blown up. They blew up yeah. the uh, the expressway. So he was linked to a lot of infamous murders. So just one more, I'll mention Ambrogio uh, Farino. I'm sorry, Farina was uh, killed in March of 1995. He, he was an OG connected to the Pizza Connection, another Castellamare's guy that was, um, Denaro was part of that murder. So anyhow, I have an interest in him uh, as it connects to Castellamare. I thought I would share some of those. But he's definitely, um, you know, uh, uh, was a big deal. And, you know, one last thing I'll mention was interesting about him is he was kind of a secular guy, which you don't you don't hear that too much with, especially Sicilian mafiosi, very devout Catholics, giving money to the church. He was a pretty secular guy and open about that, and he was very critical of the church at times. And um, I don't yeah, know. He was critical. Another interesting part about it. Well, something I read after he died was he was critical of the, of the church in a very specific yeah. way. <laughs> right. He was angry about the the sex. Yeah, uh, the 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 predator molestation, right? Uh, priests diddling little kids, um, controversy, and and calling them calling the church hypocrites. Yeah, he was pretty outspoken. I can, about that. I can get behind that. You know? Yeah, right, right. Uh-huh. But it, it's usually the the usually the church and the Sicilian mafia have had this yeah. like um, hear no evil, see no evil. Speak alliance, no evil. Yeah. Right. And they don't call each other out. And so that was a rare, uh, kind of a rarity, another interesting uh, you Jimmy, know, footnote before we to it. wrap this up, I want to ask you, does Gennaro, is he still alive right now if he's not captured in January? Did his capture, you know, create a, um, a apathy towards life uh, as a as a prisoner? And that that sent him into the coma that he died from. I know he'd been fighting cancer and yeah. and and so forth, but I, I think I think he had been ill for some time, which is probably one of the reasons why I think he, he was more vulnerable to if if you accept my conspiracy theory that he was hiding in plain sight and then then someone snitched mm-hmm. on him. Um because I think he was having some health issues. So I imagine it didn't help. I mean I'm not I'm not a physician. But um, it seemed like he was he was on the on the way out. So if if there if it did, it probably on the margins. You know, I would right, say. Well, uh, Matteo Denaro uh, died September two thousand and twenty three after about six months of incarceration on the heels of thirty years on the run. Uh, his his legacy is. You know, it, it's <laughs> legacy of brutality. It's, it's as I say, it's stenciled in blood and and uh, carnage, um, but it's definitely historically significant. And uh, we wanted to share our analysis with you. So he, he might he might be the last one. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Oh, but he might be the, just like Joe Messino. People talk about the last Don. Um, I'm not sure we're going to see big names like that anymore. Where Messino, Denaro, were like anyone who researches this stuff. They, they at least have heard of them. Even yeah. sometimes people who aren't that familiar with this have heard of these guys. I think you're seeing the last of an era with those two guys dying, not, not too far apart. Yeah. They ch- he chiseled that, that reputation of, of being a, um, a, a maniacal 
bloodthirsty mafia don in, in you know with bone with like human bone he yeah. chiseled it into his into his gravestone so yeah. uh you know th- this this is what we're here to do here at uh, og pod is, is give you the, this type of insight and analysis so thank you for joining us for for jimmy bucciolato and benny behind the glass i'm scott bernstein check in uh later for another episode of the og pod out <music>